So in this first video, we're going to be using these technologies. We use Java and Eclipse. We'll be building a Spring Boot application. We'll build it in Maven, test it in JUnit, containerize it in Docker, and then version control it in Git. So if you don't already have any of this software, you're going to need these things. You'll need the Java development kit. Uh, the Java development kit is for compiling and running Java, whereas the Java runtime environment is just for running Java. So you need to make sure you get the JDK. Uh, that's available from the Oracle website here. You need a development environment. Now I'm using Eclipse. That's free and open source. Uh, that's available here. There are others available, but I prefer Eclipse. You need uh, Spring Boot tools, which is available from the Eclipse Marketplace. Uh, there's various ways to start off a Spring Boot project, but the easiest way is with Spring Boot tools. You can just do it from the menus in Eclipse. Then you'll need Docker. Now, I would recommend Docker Desktop because later on we're going to need Kubernetes and Docker has a integrated Docker Desktop has a integrated Kubernetes. So the easiest way to install Docker is with Docker Desktop available here. You need a Git client, which is available here, and then you need a Git server um, or a GitHub account. So uh, probably the easiest thing would be to use a GitHub account, but I'm going to be using a Git server, but I'll explain how to use a GitHub account instead. So to install Spring Boot tools, you open Eclipse, you go help Eclipse Marketplace and search for Spring and you want the Spring Tools 4. Um, I've already got it installed but if you didn't have it installed you could just click install there. And that gives us this option to create a new Spring Starter Project. Okay so I'm going to click on create a new Spring Starter Project and I'm going to name the project MSHW so that stands for microservice hello world uh, it's going to be a very simple hello world application uh, I want it to be a Maven project and packaging to jar uh, the group and the artifact is net.dave Kirkwood and MSHW main um, version 1 just a simple description there and the package the Java package that we want things in goes there um, I'm going to select Spring Web because it's going to be a web-based project so it's going to talk over HTTP and then I'm going to finish. Okay so that's given us a Spring Boot project uh, and it's a Maven project so we have a pom.xml which contains uh, settings to tell Maven what dependencies we've got. We've got Spring Web in there. And I'm just going to build a very simple application. So in Spring Boot, we can build controllers. So I'm going to create a package controller and add a very simple controller. Just call it Hello World Controller. Now I'm going to mark it as a REST controller. Control Shift and O in Eclipse imports the updates and then I'm going to make a method public string hello world which just returns hello world and I'm going to add a get mapping to that for just the base directory so Control Shift and O again to import get mapping. Uh, that's our application. Now I actually have something running on port 8080, which is a default Spring application. So I'm going to say here server port in application properties server.port equals 8085. And then I'm going to run our application. as a Java application. So 
so this is all uh, standard spring output and now with the application running I'm running my spring web server on port 8085 and if we visit the server at the base it should return hello world so bring a web browser and visit localhost at 8085 and there hello world so the applications working now I can kill the application by hitting the red terminate button now in the test package I'm just going to add a very simple test for this um, hello world method uh, we're not really testing the controller here I'm just going to test that the method returns hello world so usually in J in Spring Boot projects the tests are in the test package and we follow the same package names as we've used in the main application so I'm going to add a new package controller and I'm going to create a new test called hello world controller test I'm going to annotate that as spring boot test and then I'm going to test our hello world method annotate this with test and then I'm going to say public void check hello world returns message I'm going to add our hello world controller and I'm going to set it to auto wired so what that will do is Spring Boot will go and try and find us something that can fulfill this and it will automatically set it up there and then I'm just going to say assert equals controller dot get uh, the message is hello world is equal to hello world now that's not really a very good test but it's just an example of how we can do JUnit testing I'm going to right click on that test and run as JUnit test and there the test has passed now that test uh, when we do a maven build that test will automatically get run and if the test fails the maven build will fail so that's useful because if we have a whole suite of tests we can make sure that everything's still working before we can build the project now in order to do the maven build we would right click on the project and run as maven install and if you remember we set up the project to build a jar so that should now be building a jar in the target folder so now uh, we should see that it's run the tests it ran the hello world controller test uh, the test presumably the test run want it also ran uh, a test just to make sure the application loaded which is here so test run 2 failure 0 and so it went on to build the project and we have build success so now in our target folder we have mshw main 1 dot jar now I want to containerize the application in a docker container um, I want to do this because I want to make it a microservice that we're running in Kubernetes later on. So to do that, I need to add a Docker file. Now with Docker files, usually we use a, a parent image and then we configure it for our needs. Uh, so we can get parent images from we can get parent images from Docker Hub. Now, one that I happen to know. <laughs> is useful for Java is Eclipse Temurin. 
So if we visit the Eclipse Tamarind page on Docker Hub, we can see that this is official images for OpenJDK binaries built by Eclipse Tamarind. And if we scroll down, we can find instructions of how to use it. So this is a example Docker file to use Eclipse Tamarin. And what it's saying is we're using the Eclipse Tamarin parent image, parent image. So that comes with everything we need to run a Java application in a Docker container. And then we're going to run a few files on it. We're going to make a directory. We're going to copy our jar file into the directory that we make and then we're going to run java with the jar option and this is our jar which is copied into the example directory so i'm just going to copy that and i'm going to make it a doc file in our project the doc file has to be named doc file with a capital d and a small f and then we'll paste it into there. Uh, I just need to check our name is MSHW main. It's in the target folder. MSHW main one dot jar. And we'll copy it to opt app. We might as well rename it to japp.jar. So now you can see we're making this directory. We're copying our jar from here that we built with Maven into this app, this directory we've just made, but we're renaming it to that. And then we're going to run it with that command. So in order to build the Docker image, I need to go to a terminal. Create a new terminal and to build the image I'll cd into this directory so I'm currently in Eclipse workspace mshw there's our docker file so I do docker build from this directory and I'll create the Docker file MSHW. So that's going to download the Eclipse Tamarin image and install our Docker file. So it's going to containerize our application. And now that may take a bit longer for you. Um, I may have had the Eclipse Tamarin cached, so that was pretty quick, but it can take different amounts of time. And then to run the Docker container, I could do docker run ports. I specify the port coming into the container. I'll just use 8085 and the internal port in the container. So that's the port we specified in the application properties. I'm going to just use 8085 for them both. And then the image name that we've just built. And hopefully we should see the same sort of logging output from Spring. There it is. So now we're running our application as a Docker image. And if I go back to my web browser and reload, we've got Hello World again. So same applications running, but this time it's inside the Docker image. So that's uh, how to compile and run a Docker image. So to kill the application, I'm going to open a new terminal. I'm going to say Docker PS to see what's running and MSHW here at the top. There's the container ID. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to say Docker container stop and the container ID and that should kill our container. So the only other thing I'm going to do is check this into Git. Now if you have a GitHub account
if you log into GitHub uh, or sign up and log in, then you can create a new repository, uh, give your repository a name, MSHW. Um, you, I think you can have one private repository, but public is okay. Create the repository and then you can copy this command here into your Eclipse Git import. Now I've actually got my own Git repository, so I'm gonna go into the Git view in Eclipse. If you can't see something there, by the way, you can usually go window show view, but we want the Git repositories view, which we have here. And then I'm going to click on clone a Git repository. Uh, I've got this already in the clipboard, but this is where you would put the uh, string that you took out of GitHub if you're using GitHub. And then I'm going to clone that repository. There's nothing in it because I've just created the repository. And then I'm going to go to my project. I'm going to close down any terminals I have open because sharing a project in Eclipse with Git actually moves the project. So, and I don't want directories open in terminals that stop existing. So I'm gonna right click on the project and team share project, select Git and select the repository that I want to share it to. If you are new to Git, you won't have all these. You'll just have the one that you've just created. And then finish. Then I'm gonna right click on the project and team commit. I'm gonna add all the files that we've changed to the staging area and give it a initial commit message and commit and push and that's pushed there now so I version controlled the software as I develop it more I'll be able to roll back to previous versions or see how things change along the way so that's it for video one in the next video we'll be taking a look at using YAML to deploy the container into Kubernetes so thanks for watching